This is Panzer Kill 13. I hope everybody's having a good day. And uh, we're going to be doing a how to video. Uh, I've been getting a lot of good responses on all the Facebook modeling pages on the Marine Corps M4 Pacific Campaign Sherman I'm making with all of the wood planking and all of the goodies. Um, touch off on that. You know, the Germans invented this paste called Zimmerit that they used to put on their tanks for about a year between late 43 and late 44 because of the boldness of the Russian soldiers that they faced on the Eastern Front and their willingness to run up to the vehicles and plant magnetic explosives. Well, the Marine Corps facing an enemy that had little regard for his own life was facing that 10 times over and they had to develop something to be able to counter the Japanese Bushido warriors which would run up to the tanks and actually they were the first kamikazes even before the flying kamikazes because there's accounts of Japanese running up to the tanks strapped with explosives and just jumping on the tank and blowing themselves up so what happened was that the units in the Marine Corps and there was no divisions there was no armored divisions there was only marine divisions and there was about six to seven tank battalions and uh, the tank I'm modeling right now is of the 4th marine battalion on Saipan now the 4th and the 5th used unit wide camouflage no two tanks were the same though. the camouflage was similar throughout the unit of the meaning in color but application differed from company to company, unit to unit, and battle to battle, believe it or not. Some used soft edge camouflage, the majority used hard edge camouflage, and whatever that they could find to put and add on to their tanks to try to deter the Japanese suicide soldiers from climbing on board, prying the hatches open, throwing grenades in, or just simply blowing themselves up. Now. Uh, I've been getting a lot of comments as to, well, the Marines only used the M4A2. No, there were some M4A3s. And the kit that I'm using, which is Italeri's uh, uh, Marine Corps Sherman, and I'm going to show you right here. Here it is. It actually gives you the option of building an M4A2 or this one here, which is an M4A3. It gives you the option of building either or. It has everything needed which isn't that much all it is is the engine screens and what have you it also includes everything needed to build a D-Day June 6, 1944 tank as you can see in the pictures the deep weighting equipment and, and what have you for an American uh, issued Sherman tank on D-Day that being said the wood that comes with the kit is very unsatisfactory it is made out of plastic and although the, I've seen others that have built the kit and they make the attempt to make the wood look natural first of all very rarely did the tank have natural colored wood if anything they would always paint it olive drab to match the tank and or the rest of the camouflage did it happen that there was you a couple of tanks that made it to the yes there was a couple of tanks that made it to the battlefield with natural wood that was the exception most of the time if anything it was olive drab and again, only the 4th and 5th tank battalion used camouflage in a unit-wide way, whereas every, pretty much every unit within that battalion, they uh, employed this camouflage by mid-early 43 to mid-43. They started getting a trickle of M4A3s in, say, mid-43, late-43. So they were operating all this stuff already. You can go to uh, uh, gyrene.com and it is a website dedicated to nothing but the U.S. Marines. You can find all the pictures of the tanks there, all the history of every unit there, what have you, what have you.
what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing the wooden planking and I'm also going to show you how I made the spikes that are have gone on the turret. The turret's almost finished. I ordered some periscopes from Verlinden. Normally I'll make them but I kind of want to hurry up and get this diorama done by our IPMS Sacramento contest date which is December so I'm trying to hurry up as much as possible on pretty much everything. The spikes I'm going to be showing you how to make today, all the wood planking I'm going to be showing you how to make today in the video. Now, I'm also going to be making another video later on which I've uh, been getting a lot of requests. Every time I upload a, a, a diorama somebody wants me to make something. And I understand and, and I appreciate it that you like my work and I'm going to try to accommodate everybody. One thing again I'm going to touch off here because this video will be uploaded first is the trolls and the rivet counters that continue to bug and pester people and won't show their own work. Listen to me. I experienced it in my last diorama, the Gross Deutschland March to the Dawn diorama. Not so much with trolls but people focusing on something minute other than acknowledging the accomplishment that was made they kind of want to look for something to nitpick at and it's people that I never see posting anything up but yet they want to go and correct me I was on military model uh, military modeling Facebook page that's another one of my favorite Facebook pages and I want to give a shout out to George to Mr. Uh, Thomas and uh, all the other great people on that page sorry I didn't mention it in my last video again I want to give a shout out to the Tamiya model model magazine Facebook page military modeling Facebook page modeling World War II Facebook page and World War II diorama art Facebook page and plastic model builders group Facebook page there are so many those are some of my favorite um, back to the rivet counters remember something and I ran into a post yesterday by one of the gentlemen on military modeling and how someone was telling him this and that, that and this. I'm going to tell you something. I model for myself first before I model for you and everybody else. It sits on my shelf. My friends come over and they go, ooh, ah, how did you do this? I go to contests and they go, ooh, ah, how did you pull that off? That's the high I get. That's my reward. I don't win every contest. Should I win every contest? Like I, I said in a meeting before, lately I've been running into moronic judges. That'll be a different video in itself. But nevertheless, I'm my favorite modeler. And it, I feel that, yes, I should win every contest. I know I'm going to get a backlash on this and all of that stuff. But if I were to show you the dioramas that I've been winning, somebody asked me on my last diorama, you know, you think the judges, yes. Here in the western part of the United States, I noticed the judges are biased towards their friends' work. And that is the truth. I'm sorry that you don't like it. And if it stings at our contest, I'm going to hand out the IPMS International judging sheets to every category so that hopefully we can get the judges to adhere to the rules and not to their friends' favorite subject. The judges are very biased here on the western part of the United States. Most of the time towards their friends and very pro-American. If I were to show you the diorama, and I'm not going to do this out of respect for the modeler, the diorama that won the last contest I attended at Reno, you would say, there is no way. I said there is no way. Nevertheless, that's a, in the past and I'm going to let it go. But yes, they are very biased. Now, we're on to the ribbon counters. When you go and you criticize someone's work, please, please, and I, we know it's a free society and you can say what you want. Remember this, we can say what we want too because a lot of people are jumping. I've noticed that a rivet counter will say something, someone will defend the, the, the modeler or the modeler will defend himself and then other people think that he's rude or whatever and then they stop looking at the modeler's work or stop liking the work. Remember read the entire thread before you make judgment on a modeler that's defending himself or defending someone else i'm very outspoken and i'm very straightforward i'm very respectful i never say anything if i'm not going to say something nice do i think that there's a lot of work out there that doesn't match the skill level that i have you yes i do 
That's their skill level. That's where they're at. I had to start somewhere. We all do. But what I don't like is rivet counter nitpickers that want to go and bash somebody and never post anything themselves. They like to point the finger. Remember, when you point the finger, three are pointing right back at you. Before you go and chastise somebody's work and criticize somebody's work, let's see some of your work. Yeah, I feel if you never post anything, you have no right to thrash anybody. Post some of your work. Better yet, here's what I want to say to people. A lot of people were trying to correct me on my last diorama, saying that the MG34 and that it doesn't shoot the bullets that way. I defended myself and it came off as, I guess, too harsh and a lot of people don't like that. Which, what happened was took focus away from my work because I, I saw that it tanked on some of the pages and I poured my heart out to try to make a, an exciting thing and the arguments pulled, I guess, people because people obviously don't care if the rivet counter offends you or the rivet counter nitpicks, but the minute you defend yourself, they take that into consideration, which I don't think they should. They should see the work and the accomplishment, which is why I was getting a, really frustrated with the nitpicker rivet counters on my last post because they were taking attention away from the accomplishments that I made and the diorama that I put out. Uh, is it going to bother me? No, I'm still going to come at you. If you come at me, when I know I'm right, I know I'm right. I also acknowledge that you're right. You can't make everybody happy. But if you're going to go and nitpick and you're going to go and thrash somebody's work, please, let us see your work. Better yet, don't correct me. Don't correct me as to how I did it wrong. You model it. You model what you're trying to correct me and show me. That would be the best way. Because that way there's no defense. There's no offensive there's no anything you're just showing me and I would go wow okay yeah that looks better trust me I'm about putting the most exciting most best work out there that I possibly can to make my friends go oh ah oh. I get I get off on that I get off when people go how did you do this how did you do that I, I, I get off on that and which is why I try to make my work as realistic as possible nevertheless enough of that please be considerate be considerate of others' work. Everybody's not going to have a skill, the same skill level. I didn't start off jumping off doing the type of dioramas I do. My work was horrendous when I was six years old when I started this. It's improved over the years. Nevertheless, please people, it's just modeling. I also, modelers, don't take it to heart. It's just modeling. Is it going to kill you? It didn't kill me. It irritated me, but it didn't kill me. Am I going to stop doing what I'm doing and the way I'm doing? No. Neither should you. Build for yourself before you build for anybody else. This is supposed to be a fun hobby. Nitpickers and rivet counters, please consider that. It's supposed to be a fun hobby. But also, do not be surprised when we lash back at you. Let us see your work. Show us. You model it and show me how it's done. Nevertheless, enough of that. Let's get back to our fun hobby. Here is now the video for the Pacific Co Pacific uh, Campaign Marine Corps Sherman I'm working on and all of the modifications that a lot of the units did. I hope you enjoy it. Comment, PM me, ask me whatever you want. I'm always glad to help anybody. A lot of people were asking me in the last diorama, how did you do the bullets or is that a secret? No. I'm, I feel proud that you want to use my techniques. I feel good that you consider my work good enough that you want to try to do it. I'm never going to keep any type of helpful hints away from people. If I would have had helpful hints when I started at six years old, I'd be a billion times better by now. This is a hobby. We pull together. We pull for each other. We. I like seeing everybody else's work. I like when someone pulls something great off and you just go, yeah, you know? Yeah, and, and, and that's what it's about, guys. It's about camaraderie, having a good time, and let's ooh-ah each other. Nevertheless, here's the video. I hope you have a good time. Subscribe for more how-to videos. I'm going to be making more how-to videos. Coming up is going to be a Fosherim Jagger figure painting video that I'm going to do for a friend of mine that's been asking me. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people are asking me about the fire effects. I'm going to do that, too. I'm going to be making a diorama and I don't know whether this 
Pacific or diorama will have it or not, but I'm considering adding LED, which will light up the flames and really give life to the diorama. Nevertheless, happy modeling. Let's see those projects. Panzer Kill Out. I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, here we are at our workstation. Now, the kit provides wood made out of plastic. And where some people have, like I said, used it and painted it and everything and all that, I always like to do, since I'm going to also do battle damage, I like to do the things out of the real thing. So we are going to make our wood planking out of balsa wood. Now, this is going to be what I'm showing you here is going to be the planking that the bogies take. Now some tanks covered the bogies, some tanks didn't, some tanks only covered it with one plank. There was no right or wrong. Again, I'm gonna go I'm gonna touch up on this. There's no right or wrong. There wasn't a set uniform that you have to use three planks and they have to be 10 by 20. No, it was whatever that unit, that marine, that field maintenance crew could find to fit to your tank. That's the way it went. It, there, is, there is no uniform. The United States government did not cut planks and then send them to the Pacific for them to <laughs> allocate. A lot of this came from the camps that the, that the CBs would build and stuff like that. Nevertheless, the way I came to the size of my planking for my bogies and uh, let's move all our equipment out of here since we're going to use all of this stuff. I always use a, 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 a $5 butcher cutting board for everything. They last forever. I have two of them and uh, you do all your cuts and everything here. Okay, here's our subject model. Now, the bogies are going to be covered on mine. And I've already made the planking and I've already taken the time to measure it and cut them out. And what you do is people go, well, you know, where the wood, where are you going to get the wood? The wood is something similar like this. It's balsa wood and you can find it at any hobby shop here in the U.S. I don't know about Europe. I can't speak about Europe. I lived in Germany. I never went to a hobby shop while I was there and, and what have you. But you can find the balsa wood in any hobby shop in the United States because they use that RC mo RC airplane modelers use it to make RC radio control airplanes nevertheless I've cut the length of the hole out also and uh, we're gonna be using an extra hole it pays to have several of the same tank since this one's already done up and uh, we're gonna touch off on this um, right now I'm using an extra hole to show you an easier way to cut all the planking and what have you uh, wanted to show the tank um, a lot of people are asking me what things are and why are they there this bracing here I made out of brass and it is to hold the rear deep waiting trunk there and uh, I also recommend if you're gonna build any kind of Sherman whether it's Tamiya or uh, it's a Larry pick one of these up Verlinden has these for eight dollars and where it doesn't come with everything that an Edward gives you it comes with the main things like periscope guards and uh, periscopes inside and 50 caliber gun cradle very good quality for the money eight dollars I actually found this on eBay for five dollars in the old copper which I love better than the brass it's more sturdier and you can see here it gives you all of the light guards the light guards all of the front all of the front light guards here and here and here it gives you a lot of goodies for eight dollars that you pay if you want to buy it straight from Verlinden brand new or see if you can find one on eBay I found this one for five dollars each I'm, I'm also building a, a George S Patton's third army relief of Bastogne Battle of the Bolts diorama using Tamiya tanks and uh, each tank I got that kit for each tank um, you can see this is the progress that I made Last night, I glued the spare bogies here, the spare uh, uh, track sections there that a lot of the Marines did. Today, we're going to be making the wooden planking here and the wooden planking here. 
Now, the way I came about, and remember, there is no right or wrong. Nobody can tell you those are the wrong size because there was no specific size. It was whatever it was. And what I did is I took the sheet of, ba of balsa and cut it to somewhere near where I wanted to the the length of, of the bogies that I wanted to cover and what I'm going to do is what I've noticed that they normally do is they start they cover to the bottom of the bogey right where the suspension starts right here this is the flush with the bottom of the bogey here too because basically they wanted to cover this they wanted to cover this from being able to get magnetic mines put on and you know you you put it at the bottom and what I did is after like I said like I, I did the wrong cut I put it at the bottom and then I looked and I said okay I wanted to go to this I put the track on to see the 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 rubber track that comes with the kit I'm going to be using a set of AFB club link to link workable tracks on this but this is great to gauge everything don't ever throw these away I always use link to link tracks on all my armor but I use these to make the depressions of the tracks on the dioramas you don't want to use the good track for that so you keep those but you put the track on and then you can see the clearance and what you're going to need and at which point I marked it in the back just with my little exacto knife and then what I did is I flipped it over in its big state and I measured the mark marking it with a with a pen and then I measured over here and I marked with a pen and then what I did is I just put my straight edge and just took my blade and cut to size now I've already taken the time to cut one of the sides in two because it's actually two planks that are going to be used to give you an effect of two by twelves or whatever you know one plank oops I'm sorry guys one plank and then this plank his, his partner will go on top all the way across too so the reason though that I didn't cut this one is because there are some braces that go here that I'm going to put on you don't have to you can glue the, the wood flat to the bogey but I've seen where they had some wood here to make it stand up just a little bit and that is what I'm going to be doing which I haven't that's why I haven't cut this one I've cut a piece already one of the braces now again I don't know about Europe but the craft store Michaels sells these already in the long rod and they are the perfect size I forgot what size this is I'm assuming when I picked it up it was the smallest size of balsa wood that they had there you can see the barcode here that they scan to give you the price and charge you but I cut a piece of it and lo and behold it fits perfect it fits perfect for the application that I want to do which is fitted in the valley here like so and I will cut the excess up here flush with the top here and I will glue these first before I glue the, the rest these will be glued and painted with the whole tank and then the plank will be painted separate from the tank these planks will be painted separate from the tank and then glued to that the reason doing is that I want to get a good good stick here and I'm gonna do all six of them and what I'm gonna glue them with is not crazy glue super glue CA glue or any of that because it becomes brittle and it won't grab good enough I'm going to be making a batch and somebody asked what kind of glues you use for what for heavy resin for 
other than resin on on plastic I use a two-part epoxy that they sell here in the US called JB JB weld JB quick this is as strong as steel when it dries and it sits in five minutes and you put equal parts onto a, a piece of paper you take a regular toothpick and we're gonna be doing that today and you mix it and you apply it and then you apply that to that and it'll never come off nobody's gonna know and the way we're going to apply the planks to that is going to be with the same type of adhe adhesive device which is JB weld JB quick I use this for heavy resin parts I use this to uh, glue all of my vehicles to the bases of my dioramas they're this is as strong as steel they're not gonna go anywhere they're not gonna break off it never goes brittle it never loses its grip none of that stuff it's excellent for a lot of things you can see here I used it to advantage here gluing the brass rod and it actually looks like welding around the brass rod supports for the rear weighting material so there's a lot of applications you can use it for now we're going to cut our braces and we're going to need six of these we're going to need six of these I've already cut this one and the way you do it the way I did it is this is why I didn't cut this one in two so I can handle it better you take your pre fabricated from the hobby store or you can actually make the braces from strip of this too just measure out and cut it but nevertheless I've got the prefabricated here and I'm gonna make five more braces and what we're gonna do here is we're going to cut a length of what I feel I'm gonna use here and I've cut that length and now what you do what you do is this is the wire that I used for the spikes that's a whole different demonstration coming up in a little bit for the spikes on the turret and what have you you know there is no right or wrong gentlemen there's no right or wrong ladies if you're watching uh, just cut it to the best of your ability it's not gonna be perfectly straight they weren't perfectly straight on the tank it was a field modification and what you do to do it quick you put it on the ground this is what I do I put it on the ground I put my plank over it with my finger put it right to where I think is because you're gonna retrim it anyway so it doesn't matter if it's not perfect to what you think is the edge and you just cut the size do all five of them like this super fast there you go see we made our perfect sized brace for the wood and and remember we're still gonna trim because this is smaller there's like about I don't know a scale of six inches off here six scale inches that do not require the brace because it sits in the valley here so this is going to get trimmed too and it's going to get trim trimmed at eye point not at perfectly measured because it wasn't like that in the field but now i've made two i just have to make four more and we're done making our braces for our bogey skirts and again we put it to where i think the edge is and you get your flat blade or whatever blade you use put it up against the material and cut straight down and you're gonna make them very quick this way very quick we've got three we're, we're already halfway through there's only three bogies on each side guys and we put our wood and we proceed to cut Two more to go, and we're done. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know that 
the angle wasn't that good. I'm sorry. Bear with me, guys. I have never done this on camera. <laughs> okay. I have never done this, period. This is my first time. Okay. This is the first time doing wooden planks. And now we've got one more to go, guys. One more to go. And voila. We are finished. Now what we're going to do, we don't need our bogey planking anymore. We you can put our bogey planking to the side. It weighs nothing. It's balsa wood. It weighs nothing. Now, here are our six brace planks and what we're gonna do very simple there is no right or wrong there is no measuring perfectly unless you want to I like to do it simple and easy and you'll see my results in the end lay like this is a more square flat oh no this one's pretty good anyway lay the brace within its perimeter here if, if it's perfectly in there see it even holds down and what you want to do is there is no right or wrong and out of one we're going to make the six take make sure it's flush all the way Take your blade, just be careful, and mark it. Mark it. You don't have to cut it on there. Just mark the position of it. You can fine-tune it after. Okay. Here's my mark. I'm going to lay my blade in it. Hmm. Should have marked it a little heavier. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> no problem. Okay. What we're going to do is... We're going to hold it with our thumb. You, you can hold it with a clamp or whatever. I don't want to pull out a bunch of clamps. I'll tell you what we're going to use. We're going to use our X-Acto knife for this. Get a better angle in here. And then we'll cut. Get your X-Acto knife. Mark it. Wow, it feels like it goes in good, but it doesn't. All right, let's do round three. And see, I've got the camera in the way and all that, so, and I got to go really slow, so. Really dig in so that you can mark it. Yeah, actually, yeah, look, leave it on there. Yeah, now it marked really good. Okay. Here we go. Now, we've got our plank there, and we've got it marked. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to try to cut it as straight as possible. There is no right or wrong. If you feel that the angle isn't what you wanted, you can adjust it. It's not going to show. It's designed to hold the wooden planking on the bogey. That's it. Mm. 
Now, let's fit our wooden plank, our wooden brace actually, not our plank. Our wooden brace, there it is, beautiful. No right or wrong, guys. There's no right or wrong, that's perfect. And then let's test fit, not with our two pieces, but with our single piece, because it's the same thickness as the two pieces, only that it's been cut in half. And let's test fit Beautiful. Beautiful. It's going to look great when it's done. So now that you've cut the first one, guess what? You line them all up with that one. And now you're going to do the rest really super quick. You don't have to be doing the same procedure over and over and over and over. And this is so soft that it cuts like a, like a piece of butter. So you just proceed. And remember, there's no right or wrong. See how that works? There's no right or wrong to do this. This is my first time doing wooden planking on a tank, guys. I'm just giving you ideas. You can tweak them to your own self, whatever you want to do. This is going to give you a more realistic look than the kit provided planking. And there we are we're just cloning them to you don't have to measure you don't have to have it precise this is not a rocket and there doesn't need to be rocket science to this get it in the ballpark it's not going to show it's going to look make your model look way better though than if you just use plastic wood planking provided with the kit See how that works? Line them up, line the next guy up, and away you go. It does, it's not very time consuming. Or it doesn't have to be. There you go. We've made our six wooden braces that are going to go on the bogies to hold our wooden planking better to the bogies. Now, what we're going to do, and I always have I'll find uh, business cards that businesses go out of and they'll be in the trash, a whole set of a thousand or whatever, pick them up because everything's useful for something. But if you can't find business cards, go to the liquor store and pay three, two, three dollars for a, a set of playing cards and uh, they're helpful for everything. I'm going to show you why. We're going to proceed to make the adhesive for that. I'm going to show you right now how we're gonna do that normally I get two toothpicks one to mix and then it gets really dirty and ugly and everything and then you throw that away and then one to apply the one to apply you should have a very fine tip that way you can control the action one to mix it's okay if it doesn't have a fine tip or whatever just you know it doesn't matter, you're going to throw it away. And this is how we do our adhesive. We put a little dab of hardener. Be careful not to squeeze too much. And then we put a little dab of the liquid steel. A 
kind of equal parts. You want to put equal parts. Nothing will happen if it just sits there. As long as you don't mix them. Once you mix them, it hardens like steel. And what you want to do get all your stuff ready, everything, everything that you're gonna glue, have your have your wood ready, everything. And then you proceed to mix, you're going to proceed to mix your epoxy. You pick it up the hardener and put it into the steel and you just mix it. Make sure that it mixes really good. Back and forth, just mix it. It takes about a good five to ten, uh, five to eight minutes to set, so don't worry. The clock's not running. You'll be able to do it. And just mix it. Mix it thoroughly. Make sure that it's all mixed. Make sure you gather it at the end so that you can have one place to be able to pick it up from. And now with your application toothpick, Pick up your subject. Pick some up on the with the tip. It's really gooey at first. Go to your valley here. Remember, nobody's going to see anything. And just put a little bit. You can do two or three at the same time. It's not going to dry right away. If you don't want excess over here, you can clear it off. It's not dried yet. If you like, you can flip the model over however comfortable you feel working with the material. See, we've applied to all three bogies. Now, pick up one of your braces. Again, there is no right or wrong here. Pick up one of your braces and lay it in from the bottom. see and they hold right away not really heavy objects I mean if you have a heavy object you're gonna have to hold it or tape it or whatever but these really super light balsa wood pieces and like I said it sits in like five minutes so it stays workable for about four and a half minutes see that That will get painted with the vehicle, and then when it when the vehicle's painted, 
the bogey planking will get painted and attached to that. We'll do the other side next. Okay, we're finished putting the braces on our tank. Now, as I was saying earlier, the kit provided wood is okay, but it's very uh, plastic looking. It's got nice grain and you can make it work. I'm not saying you can't, it's adequate enough. But I'm going to add battle damage and I want as much realism as, po as possible. So I'm gonna damage the wood and you cannot recreate the damage on plastic as you can on real wood. This is a sheet of balsa that I also made that I cut the pieces out for the bogey planks. They sell these in three, 36 inch by whatever, 3 inch and in different thicknesses at any hobby shop. I always buy in abundance so I have several of these and uh, there's no decal on this to tell me what's the exact size but this is pretty much the scale of the 2 by combs that I'm going to be using for the side of the hole. Now due to the fact that I should have actually cut the planks first before I started doing the whole tank I've added everything to the tank so I don't want to damage any of the light guards or run the risk of breaking something so I would recommend doing this before everything goes on the tank luckily I always have several of the, of the same kit and this is a, the same exact hole as that it's from an Intellary Sherman with a Calliope same exact tank and uh, it's a spare hole so I pulled it out and I took the hole out and I'm going to show you how to make the side planks really super quick really super quick like I said uh, it's not gonna take long to do this and what we're gonna do is we're going to line up our plank with the bottom of the hole remember this is wood it's not precise so it's not going to have a precise laser cut line now you can see here I've already test fitted it but you can pick these clamps up at Home Depot which is a hardware store chain here in the United States I don't know if it's available in Europe they're 38 cents they're great to hold wings together on aircraft they're rubber tips so they don't damage the material and uh, you can proceed to make sure everything's straight This is how you can test fit it right here. Make sure everything is straight. Like I said, it does not have to be perfect. It looks pretty straight to me. Then you can clamp it. in precision and see it's clamped pretty straight to the bottom of the hole here straight to the bottom of the hole and what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn it around and just trace it trace it with a pencil or a pen and that's gonna make our job easier to do our marine core wooden planking take a regular pen and just run it gently. Remember, you're going to straight edge it anyway. Run it gently on it. It doesn't matter if there's bumps or whatever because we're going to straight edge the cuts. See that? We're going to straight edge all of the cuts. So it, it isn't going to matter. The, the bumps that you run into with the light guard mounts and, and what have you. We're just going to trace it. Like so. Now, what we're gonna do, 
is we are going to release it and now we have our planks traced and what we're gonna do is everybody should have a straight edge or a ruler with a straight edge I have small straight edges that are made out of metal and large ones for this I'm gonna use the small one because of the angles that are really small and what you just do is a uh, first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut I'm gonna cut along the top straight across and take the small piece out to make it easier to work make the piece smaller to make it easier to work with my long straight edge which is a metal ruler and I'm gonna cut it a little larger so I can have more room to work Here. and just run the blade along the grain and trust me it'll come off this is not hard wood to cut it's very soft and what you do is uh, see and it comes right off now now we have a smaller piece that we can work with with our smaller straight edge and we don't need to be moving this and knocking parts out with this big long one and what I'm gonna do first is remember the hole is the same on the other side so you can just trace it always cut inside the line as the hole is a little bit smaller There's the first cut for our wood planking. It's real wood. It's going to act like real wood, look like real wood when we mount it. Now, since this is a longer cut, I'm going to make that cut first. And since this is a longer angle I'm gonna to have to use the long straight edge put inside the line because the hole tends to be a little bigger make sure you have a sharp blade so you don't have to be working it and working it and working and now our last angle I'm going to cut below the line on top here and then the last angle which is the rear and you want to get the angle right Let's go back to our small. It's overhanging too much. And there we are. Now we will proceed to cut this in half and make two planks. Let's test fit on our hole.
and here we go beautiful lines up beautifully beautiful it just lines up beautiful the front and then we'll just cut that in half and that made our planks I'm modeling the, the planks that are directly to the hole some guys put bra some units put braces like the ones here in between the hull and the wood I've seen a couple of tanks that I like that have it directly to the hole not any type of uh, support in between and that's what I'm gonna model so now what we want to do to make it even easier see your job gets easier after the first one you bring back your wood this is the edge that's straight from when I bought the wood so put your wood to that trace it and now you have your other you have your other piece of your hole and then you're just gonna straight edge it anyway See that? And now we've got our other cut, very simple. On that side. And that will be for this side. Okay. Take your long straight edge and make the first big angle cut. Let's move our piece that's done off so we don't damage it. And uh, let's proceed to place our straight edge. Again, remember cutting below the line because. The tracing gives you like an extra Well, I know what we're gonna do. This is a big piece and I just wanna get rid of one of the sections that I can use later on. So let's do the same like we did on the last piece. Let's cut the excess out. just proceed to put it this way and cut straight across now, like I said this wood cuts super easy now this is excess this could be used for anything anything else so you don't damage it and now we will proceed to trim away the XS wood on our planks here they don't have to be stained, they don't have to be anything because they're going to be painted the same color of the tank. Remember that. So, I use primer on all my models and it will come in really handy here. Make sure you get just a little bit under so that you can make a proper cut. Like I said, it doesn't take a lot to cut this wood, it's very soft. Balsa, don't get bass wood because bass is very a little stronger. Balsa is the way to go.
don't like the cut, go over it again. So you trim the excess. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm sure the wood was not perfect. Put our big sucker away because it's too big and bulky for what we need. And we'll use a smaller one here. Hold it tight. This is for all of you that now want to model a Pacific Core, a Pacific Campaign Marine Corps Sherman. And you want to make it authentic with all of the stuff that they added to it and everything. And there we are. Now let's test fit it to our hole. To make sure it fits. And make adjustments when needed. And to me, it fits great. I'm happy with it. Bottom, bottom. Can't find the bottom straight edge. There we go. Right. Now it looks like I need to trim a little bit here, which once I cut it, since I cut the angle on it. Once I cut it, I will proceed to trim it, but I'm happy with it. You just made a quick two sides of the plank. <laughs> and uh, now we'll cut this in half. We're going to lose some wood when we cut it in half, so that will probably come down. But nevertheless, if you want to strain it out just a little bit, because the angle is kind of like this for me, what I'm going to do is, let's remove all that stuff, let's get our sanding stick file, lay it flat, there's coarse and there's medium, and just proceed to go back and forth a couple of times, there's no right or wrong. Find the flattest part. Let's uh, do this side. Okay. Right off the axis. And it looks like I'm going to be real happy with it now. It's so soft that it only takes a couple of times back and forth. I'm happy with it. I'm going with it. This is going to look real good when we're done with it. Real good. I might I might just trim just a little bit off of here. But I mean for what we're doing and the work necessary it it's happening very quickly again I've never done this so your first time my first time after the vehicles painted I will attach these using the same method as the braces with epoxy putty I mean with epoxy uh, 
two part epoxy. <laughs> epoxy putty. There it is. Oh yeah. That's what I want guys. That's what I want. Beautiful. Now we're gonna add our bolts. So what we're gonna do, uh, let's check out the other side and see how it matches. It matches really nice. Yes. Trim the little pointy nose off. Beautiful. Put this side on to the desired length at the desired point. your razor blade and just notch it. Beautiful. Beautiful. that that excess is not going to show but it will show from the front which I don't want there to be a gap since it's the front so I'm going to glue this with wood glue which I have handy I have almost any kind of glue handy for all of these type of projects I have wood glue and epoxy putty and what have you We'll put some of our wood glue on here, spread it around really thin. Remember, this thing's not going to show but the front wheel, and that's why I'm fixing this. Since it's really super soft, it's almost like a sponge. Be very careful. Handling the wood, don't crunch it because it'll get crunched and then it won't look good. Oh. Beautiful. That's I'm happy with. And just work from the front to the back. Thank you. 
flat. And we should be okay. Okay. That'll dry by the time I need to work it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to proceed to cut these in half so that we can add our bolts to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure and more or less it doesn't have to be perfect like I said I'm showing I'm showing one two three I'm showing seven eighths of an inch. That's what I'm showing, seven eighths. So I'm gonna cut it. At three and a half eighths. So I'm gonna mark it. One, two, three. No, this is not seven eighths. Five eighths, I'm sorry. Two, three. One, two, three. That can't be right either. One, two, three, four. Oh, sixteenths. These are in t I'm sorry. These are in sixteenths. So what we got is we got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve, sixteen, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it'll be six and a half, which should go right here. Let's center it right and let's move it up forward more. And make sure it's flush with the top. And we're going to mark it on both ends. And then we're going to straight edge it, okay guys? We're going to mark it. And then we're going to straight edge it. So we're going to go one, two, three. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a half, because it's actually 13, so we're marking it right here, remember there's no right or wrong, but I'm just gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, and a half. Because it's 13. 13 sixteenths. Now, go a little bit further back. Put it straight with the top, as straight as your straight edge will go. Remember, there's no right or wrong. It doesn't have to be precise. It's still gonna look good when we're done. Go one, two, three, four, five, six. And a half. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. Okay, now we're not long enough to do it with this small one, so let's do it with this guy. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this out of the way so we don't damage it. Put it sideways. Put your great edge here. And what I would suggest 
because you can adjust it the other way better is let's cut this way. Put our straight edge. And it looks pretty good to me. Press down on it. Be careful so that you don't cut your fingers. Stay hard against the wall of the metal. And cut. And there we are. There are our two planks for our Sherman tank. The two planks that we needed to cut for our Sherman tank. Consequently, this is this side here. And there we go. We have our two planks that we wanted for this project. Beautiful. Freaking beautiful. Remember, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be exactly, but that's okay. And it doesn't matter for the markings or whatever because they're going to get painted. It's going to get painted. There's our bottom plank there. And that's how it's going to fit. Now we're going to add our bolts. Consequently, you can use this to mark this guy. And it makes the job that much faster and easier. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That part, this is the inside. So what we're going to do... going to just go ahead and mark it. There's our mark there. Now, so that you don't mess up, mark on the inside, right side, left side. That way you can keep them together. Remember, it's not going to show. Don't press too hard because it's very soft wood. And there we are there. Wood is very soft, very compresses very easy. to deal with oh well, yeah let's cut it the right way line up our let's line up our marks Our blade. Make sure it's dug in all the way. Make sure it's touching the metal all the way. And I'm happy with it. Beautiful. And here we are. Let's mark it on the inside, left side, drivers, and that way they stay that way they stay together.
There we are, we've marked them. Now, we are going to put our bolts on our planks here. Bolts, where are you gonna find bolts? As far as I'm concerned, you can find bolts in three places. You can get these, which are called grant line bolts, available from Hobby Suppliers. This is number 127, which would be the right scale. One twenty-seven, which would be the right scale, and we would just be needing the head on it because you don't really see the bolt in there unless you want to make the whole and do the whole shebang. Which, yeah, I I might do the drill the hole and do the whole shebang. It's only gonna take a certain amount, but you can get grant line bolts number one twenty-seven or. Verlinden sells a set of bolts number 0075 and on the pallet they are these little ones here it's just the bolt head it's actually the nut with let's see if I can get it is the nut with the bolt on it and the nut and the bolt peeking through the nut those are to scale like these here and another place you can find bolts is in the old dragon 1996 release of the panzer 4 f2 that kit there has a sprue which is coated with the letter M. The M sprue, which they give you two of, brings bolts molded right to it of different sizes. Can you see that? They're molded right to it and you can cut them right off the sprue. And they're molded. These are bolt heads, but the one we would be using, and they give you different sizes and different types on the same sprue, are these right here see how the bolt peeks through the nut there they come free on that kit and we just cut them off and glue them to our planks which is what we're gonna do these are the ones I'm going to use I'm gonna save my Berlinden and grant line for later again the Berlinden nut and bolts that you can buy this straight from Berlinden on eBay for like four dollars three dollars five bucks you can buy a pack of number 127 grant line bolts at any hobby supplier that carries grant line and they're like about six dollars seven dollars or if you have the old dragon panzer 4 f2 kit you get three bolts of all of all sizes I don't know if you can see that there. There they are. Free bolts of all sizes on the M sprue. I've been using these forever. I've used them for the bolts on the spare wheels of my Panzer IV. It's Larry Panzer IV is in the Grossdeutschland diorama. It's several applications. And you can't go wrong. You won't be wrong. And today, we're going to be gluing them to that. A different style of bolts, different sizes, and what have you. Okay, here now, I have marked where the bolts are going to go. They don't have to be precise. These were field applied applications. I'm applying eight to the bottom and six to the top plank. I've already cut my bolts out of my sprue and I'm ready to apply them and I'm gonna apply them using the epoxy putty, JB Weld, JB Quick. 
And here we are, we're gonna set it up and mix it. And now, we're going to proceed to apply our bolts. I'm going to put just a little bit at the spots that we need. Remember, there is no right or wrong. There is no right or wrong to the technique. There we are, that's where the bolts are going to go. Let's proceed to move this out of the way. Now, let's start at the far end, and proceed to put our bolts on. The epoxy tends to go flat after a little while if it's applied thin enough, which I believe I've done. If not, it is sandable. I don't believe I'll need to do all of that once I settle it in and primer it and paint it. And I'll show you how you can wipe away with the toothpick next. You can wipe the excess away with the toothpick while it's still non-cured. Now, proceed to push down. I don't think we're that bad. This one here got a little bit of excess. We can see how it wipes off with the toothpick while it's still not hard. It's very liquidy. Again, when it cures, it's going to go really flat. But this seems like a little more than nice excess. 
let's wipe it on. You can use CA glue also, but I like this stuff better. It's very, very strong. Again, there is no right or wrong. These things were field applied in the most rudimentary way. And that's what it's gonna look like when we're done. And there you have your plank with bolts. let it dry for a little bit it should set within five minutes you don't really want to handle it too much but it's gonna look real nice once it gets on the tank see so we will continue with our build here but pretty much mark your spot get your bolts and apply them. Okay, we're back. Now what we're gonna do is in the last segment of this video, I'm going to show you how we got all of the spike done and the spikes are basically done with copper wire and drilling in the respective part that you're going to add the spike to now normally the spikes weren't added to the hole itself or to the turret itself they were added to the soft spots like the hatches the commander's hatch the vent the fan guard here, the vent, the periscope guard here. These were weak soft spots and the periscope here that were very vulnerable to magnetic explosives. And uh, the way we're going to attach our spikes is I'm still waiting for periscopes here and here, but we're going to attach some spikes to the back part of the hatch so I can show you how it was done that will conclude this video as you can see the braces have already dried for our wood planking that goes across the bogies the planks across the hull have already been made and uh, are waiting to just get painted I can't paint until I get these periscopes and once I get these periscopes then and I see how they attach then I'll go to paint these braces are done and uh, we're almost ready for paint and again what we're gonna do is the spikes were made with electrical wire and uh, I think it was 14 or 12 gauge I I will show you in the future video I don't want to pull all the wiring out right now but you I don't know if you can see that There it is. It's a strand of wire from a 12 gauge wind. There you go. A strand of wire from a 12 gauge or 14 gauge. It c consists of several of these wound it up and then with a plastic sheet over it. You cut the sheet off and then you get a bunch of these. And uh, 
you have to pull it to straighten it out naturally because it's all coiled up or whatever and I pulled it to straighten it out and this is what the hat the spikes on the hatches are made out of and consequently this is what my nine millimeter rounds were made out of in the Gross Deutschland diorama they were cut to size and glued to another even thinner wire than this but we're gonna make spikes today and the first thing you have to do is you have to drill the holes now uh, I use a number 80 drill bit and I picked up a set of these for about 12 years ago from Micromark you can still buy them and they come in different sizes they're numbered and the reason I like these is because you don't have to get the pin vise out or anything they already have a handle cast right to them and they're very conveniently numbered and you just take them out and you use them for small jobs and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hole and we're just going to drill randomly and the, the spikes went around the hatch and in front of the periscope you're gonna leave it open so that the driver and the radio operator can see forward so you're not really gonna obscure right here and since I don't have the, the periscopes to see how wide or whatever they're gonna be I'm just gonna show you in the back of the hatch what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill a couple of holes and you just put your there is no pattern there is no right or wrong everything was random when these things were done in the field and just make sure that the excess plastic is pulled out because then when you go to put your spike in it won't go in I don't know if you can see that let's do a couple more maybe you, maybe they'll show up There you go. You can see the holes there now. Can you see them? Now remember, the spikes on the hatches for the driver and gunner have to be smaller than the spikes on the turret because the turret traverses back and forth and the gun depresses. That's why when I made these, I tested and if you look at the turret, the gun's actually depressed because the tank's going to be in an upward slight upward climb and the turret's going to be turning slightly to the left so the gun is depressed and so therefore you have to make sure that it can clear these they don't really have to be that big anyway because all they wanted to do was not let the magnetic explosive sit flat on the flat surface and uh, just keep lifting it up a couple of inches was enough to deter the blast from being able to be effective okay that should be enough I think you can see the holes there yeah you can see the holes there. anyway so that should be enough for me to show you so we put our drill bit back Now, I glue the spikes. This is the CA glue I use. I use Zappa Gap. You can use Crazy Glue, whatever. They're all going to be the same. Same formula. And uh, make sure that the tip, that has quite a bit of sludge on it. Make sure that the tip is clean so you can get a clean swipe because you're going to swipe the spikes in there. As opposed to however you want to do it, you can pour a little puddle and get the spikes in there. But I just I like to do everything as easy as possible. So I'm going to clean my CA glue. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cut the spikes. And again, the spikes are cut at eye length. I don't measure them. 
they weren't measured in the field just make sure that you cut short enough to where the turret will be able to traverse uh, okay now I'm gonna put this up here for now and I'm gonna move this out here I'm gonna cut four small pieces I don't know if you can see it but here it is and all you do is just make sure you put your finger in front of it because it'll pop away see how the back one just backed off on that and again there is no right or wrong there is no correct length make sure that they're short enough but high enough if that makes sense and uh, yeah now I drill four holes that should be enough there they are right there okay now what we're gonna do next is we'll take a fine tweezers I picked these up at a place called Pearl and they are made in Pakistan excellent tweezers um, I love these tweezers and they grip precise they don't let go and they're very solid and what I do is I put it in my hand this is me you can do it however you want pick up the piece straighten it out and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna dip just a little tip there it is it's picked up I don't know if you can see that but it's picked up some glue and then we're gonna proceed to our tank and we're going to put it in the hole now normally I'll have a extra toothpick to be able to position it you have a couple of seconds because it doesn't dry completely right away there's the first spike it's been put into the hatch right here now the next one I actually have four more holes so I'm gonna cut one more we'll move our wire out of the way so we don't damage it and it stays nice and straight for whatever other Bikes. Well, we're going to need a lot more. I'm just showing you at the back of the hatch right now so I can show you how the spikes were made, how they're applied. And again, same procedure. We pick up our spike. Or you can see that, but there it is. and then get the angle that you want nice sturdy steady angle here you dip it into the tip of the CA glue it picks up glue and then proceed to apply it there you go now you can see it better see now there's two spikes there and we've got three more to go for the amount of holes that we drilled this is just a demonstration as to how I made the spikes you can cut them to any length drill your holes first have everything pre-drilled that way you're not wasting time and you just have everything you don't need to have the spikes pre-cut I just did it so it'll be easier to demonstrate here Normally I'll just cut one by one and glue it. That's just me. And a uh, little bit of CA glue. You'll see the little bubble at the end. And apply.
There you go, now there's three spikes on there, see? Two more to go here. It does not want to stay up. It's okay. It grilled straight through, but it's okay. The CA glue will glue will dry up, and and uh, like I said, you can still position him while the CA glue is drying. There's four spikes there now. See. That's the only thing I don't like about the medium, even the fast CA glue, it will not dry immediately. It takes a little while, and I guess that guy in Florida really messed it up for everybody. It used to dry super fast, until somebody glued themselves together and then that was it. There was a lawsuit. And the idiot that did it, that was actually a fault one, and now CA glues take forever to dry because of that guy. They do have accelerator though that you can buy on your own. I'll, I'll live with it. If you ever get glue on your tweezers, which I've done several times, Rub it in the carpet really super fast back and forth. The nylon bring, takes it off immediately. If you have an old carpet or a rug, if you have plush Angora, well, no, don't do it. And we've made our planks with all the bolts. And I've shown you how to make the braces and how to make the spikes. Next is painting. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can comment. If you have any questions, PM me. Um, I'm always glad to help you. My way isn't the only way. It's the way I do it. Um, I try to do it everything the easiest way so that you can get onto the next model, get the best results and get onto the next model. That's the way I like to model. The easiest, best way that we can get the best results. Until then, Panzer Keel out and I'll see you on the next video.